Hi, this is Nick Waggy. I'm going to talk to you about using Clonezilla Server Edition to create an image file of a disk and then deploy that to another disk. We're going to start by going over how to create an image file. Now this is done by copying a disk and putting it into a file format that can be used to replicate the disk image to another disk. So we're going to start by booting directly to Clonezilla. This can be done either by USB or by disk. Okay, so obviously we're going to go with English language. We're not going to touch the key map. And for this, we're going to use the Force X Windows configuration manually. Um, you don't have to do this, but it works out best if you do. I like to choose 1024 by 768. It's pretty standard. Works well. And the VESA driver also works well for me. So as soon as Debian loads up here, we're going to click the uh, Clones of the Server Edition, and then we're going to hit Enter right off the bat. And it's going to ask us what we want to do for IP configuration. We have to choose whether or not we want to use DHCP broadcast or whether or not we want to statically configure our, our Ethernet card. And we can do it either way, but you got to keep in mind if you're using the 63 subnet, the one inside the IT office, then you have to statically set your IP address because DHCP will not broadcast in there. I'm going to choose dynamic here. Now as you look at the top of the screen here, it shows the entire DORA process that just happened and it also shows us the address that we just leased. Now this is important to keep note of because we're going to use this inside our DHCP scope to indicate what our boot server is. This ensures that our Pixie boot will point directly to our Clonezilla server. We don't have any more Ethernet cards to configure, so we'll just hit yes. So this is going to ask us what device we want to mount to store our image on. Uh, we're going to choose a local device. So now it's going to scan our machine and see what we have for local devices. This one has a hard drive with a VFAT partition and an NTFS partition. Now the NTFS partition is the one we're looking for, so we're going to pick that one. We want the top level directory here. So here we're going to pick select all clients and we're also going to pick expert mode to configure our options. So right here we're going to choose save disk. This will give us our master boot record, the file allocation table, and all the partitions all in one swing. The save parts will just grab a single partition. I'm going to choose to name the file now inside the server and I'm going to name it new xp image. Here you have to choose what device you're going to push to and it's absolutely imperative that you get it correct. Now, if you're going to push to a SATA drive, you have to choose SDA. If you're going to push to a secondary SATA drive, you have to choose SDB. Or if you're pushing to a secondary removable drive, also SDB. If you're pushing to a standard hard drive, an IDE, it would be HDA. And that's what we're doing here. Once you make this choice and pull your image, you cannot undo it without re-pulling the image. That's why it's imperative to get it right the first time. So I'm going to choose the default option here. And this looks good too. We're going to leave this as it is. And I like to choose power off here. We're going to use standard parallel compression. Now since I want my drive in one solid image file, I'm just going to hit zero right here and stop it from splitting. Now we pixie boot our client machine with the image we want to pull. Once the image is done being pulled, it's going to notify the server that it's done and show us that we have a successful image pull and it's going to show us the data rate and how many megabytes were pulled. So we're going to take the image file we just created and write it to a new disk on a new client machine. Okay, so we're going to go back into clones of the server. We're going to select all clients again. We're going to go back into expert mode again 
And this time we're going to choose Restore Disk instead of Save Disk. We're going to hit the space bar here, get rid of the Reinstall Grub Client. And we're going to choose the default on this. We want to use the partition table from the drive of the image file we pulled. We're going to skip this option. And I'm going to go back to Power Off. So it's going to give us a list of our images. And we want to choose the new XP image that we just created. And you'll also notice that it says HDA next to it, which means that we have to have an IDE drive to push it to. I'm going to choose a multicast here just to give you a demonstration, but unicast would really be called for in just a single machine push. I'm going to select clients to wait. It's what I prefer. It allows you to choose how many clients you want to join a session and then have them hold until that number of clients is reached. Okay, so here we're going to choose our one client and hit OK. Okay, so we're going to pixie boot our client machine again. As you can see, the image is already selected for the multicast restore. So now it notifies the server that it successfully copied the image that was pushed during the multicast and then it powers itself off. And that's all it takes to copy an image.